What's up everybody, Cody here. So I'm fixing to show you the Tosca, and I hope I pronounced that right, Super Boss 429 Mustang. It was mm -hmm. at a hike, Mortar Sports there in Ames, Oklahoma. Uh, I wish I would have known more about the car at the time because this would have been a lot, a much cooler video, but I didn't know. And I got home, I did some research on it. Such a, just an incredibly beautiful car. And I knew it had to be some kind of significance to the name Tosca and the car itself with that special engine and whatnot. And there actually is, there's, there's a lot to it. So I'm gonna show you the video of the car. Then after the video, if you wanna stick around, I'm gonna talk more about the car, the research I found and what I did on it. Uh, it's pretty incredible. So please stick around, let me know what you think. What a beautiful car. Wow. Absolutely beautiful. You're going to find something. Yeah, okay. Hello, Brent Hyde. Yep, that'd be Brent. What is the motor sitting around? I'm going to find a car for it. Look at that. Wow. So, took the lights out here, the duct goes up and forces air into the box, down into the intake, and that thing barely fits in there, that's a big engine. That's really cool. Wow. That's really cool. Uh, that's been number one of the OHs right there. That's the extra number two is Uber. Absolutely gorgeous. Louvers on the back. They are very loud. They're crazy. Of course, these OHs, they wouldn't have to deal with nothing anymore. They wouldn't have to deal with nothing anymore. Yeah. It's still a, a full interior car. So, looks like it used to be a four speed and they made it to an automatic for the drag racing, probably. That's cool. All right, guys, I'm back. So, the car has a pretty incredible history uh, with what it actually is and uh, how it became made and what all went into it from what I found online. So, what I have what I found was Bob Tasta had a, little for, had a little dealership in Bristol, Rhode Island that he worked out of and uh, and actually, some of you, if, if you follow drag racing today, uh, you probably recognize Tasta. Uh, Bob Tasta III still drag races today, actually. So, uh, but the original Bob Tasta, uh, he doesn't drag race anymore. But anyway, so he got with Ford and asked Ford if he could kind of be like their, uh, how do I want to say this? Almost like their... Uh, performance dealership kind of almost um what he would do is he would uh he would take a car to off assembly line and then customize it take it back to ford see if ford wanted to put into production or not and uh so in 1968 the cobra jet that's how the cobra jet came into existence uh bob tasta took it shoved in a 428 engine to the 390 out put in a 428 Took it back to Ford. Ford said, yeah, let's roll with it. And they made 50 1968 uh, Cobra Jet cars. And there's actually one in the video 
later on if you continue to watch the original the very first one they made and the original one will be on the video later on uh not this video part maybe four or five somewhere down there maybe part six i don't know but anyway so they took when the ford the boss 429 mustang was developed for more or less nascar uh the engine was designed to compete with the hemis and Ford designed it to compete with NASCAR. Um, they didn't really design it for anything else. Uh, Bob Tasca took the car and uh, decided to take that 429 engine and he took that sucker up to 494 cubic inches. Yeah, you heard me right, 494 cubic inches. That's unheard of in a car back in the 60s. Unless you had a Cadillac. Uh, but that's another story for down the road anyway so that was called a can-am 420 494 that, that's what it was called and it put out 735 horsepower which no car back then had that much horsepower uh the 1970 uh, chevelle ss with the lss package had 450 horsepower and the 1967 Shelby GT500 Super Snake, I think, has 630 horsepower. And it was designed for one purpose, to test Goodyear's new race tire. So, uh, Bob had a moto, and it had a motto, and it wasn't just Bob. A lot of people had it back in the day. First on Sunday, sold on Monday. That, that was a common thing back then. That was back when stock cars and racing were still stock cars. Uh, the cars at the drag strip, you could buy most of those parts that they were running on their engines for your daily driver at home. They had speed shops back in the day, man. Imagine that you can walk into a, to a store, go to a shelf, buy a wheel and supercharge, and slap it on your car and do a race that weekend. It's freaking awesome. Uh, gets me aside just thinking about it. We don't have that. Now we got O'Reilly's, we got AutoZone, that's just, what, just plain Jane Park. So, uh, speed shop, so man, I was definitely born in the wrong generation. But anyway, so, uh, they designed this, and as far as I know, they've only made, they only made one of these cars, and it was actually called the Super Boss. Uh, it says a 494 cubic engine called the Super Boss. They, uh, put it on a Ford uh, carrier, took it to different, different tracks to promote it and raced it. And Bob actually upped, amp, upped the ante and said, uh, I got a thousand bucks for anybody that had, that could beat me running street tires, still have mufflers, running 11 second ETs, which is estimated time. And as far as I know, he didn't pay out anything. So the car ran until the mid eighties and then it got parked. And then Brent discovered the car and bought it in 1996 and went and had it restored back to its almost original condition. He had to do some stuff to make it more modernized for safety to run on the track for, for today's standards. But he ran a 1075 with that car and the engine is still the same engine, which a 1075 quarter miles that's cooking back in the day and uh so it's pretty neat that that car came to be and while doing my research i found out that there were a bunch of specialty boss mustangs out there that i didn't even know about so i may do a video with pictures and stuff in a future video about the, the history of boss mustangs and how they came to be uh i said the 429 boss mustang is designed for nascar then, uh, but they never used it for NASCAR. They used the Torino instead. And then the Boss 302 was used for the Trans Am Racing Series, which that's a whole nother video on itself too. But I just think it's pretty neat that people are still going out and restoring these cars for us to enjoy. Uh, it's awesome that, that Bob Tasta had a vision approach forward with what he wanted to do Ford gave the green light and he did it and because of him the Cobra Jets is this today and uh, it's just 
It's just cool. It's just a cool piece of history. Uh, I hope I can get with Brent and talk to him one on one. Maybe get a video of the car running. Maybe even go for a drive in it for a lucky. Because, uh, man, the, it's just a cool car. I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Uh, I said it's one of them things that such an awesome car came from a tiny state like Rhode Island and just a little tiny dealership and and looking out there it's still out there today and his sons are still racing so but if you like the video let me know uh leave leave a comment that'd be cool see a comment maybe some uh, recommendations i'm new to this so your feedback will be highly appreciated and if you like what you see hit the subscribe button i'm gonna try to do a couple of videos a week nothing crazy but let me know if you like these uh, these videos. Appreciate it. Bye.